Good morning. Welcome to Hope Fellowship of Somerset. We meet every Sunday at 10 a.m. for uh, fellowship, uh, food, just a good time encouraging one another, sometimes pulling each other's legs. You know, some of us hobble out of here as a result. We just pray that you'll f find us and help us to reach this community for Messiah. Um, today is the is the beginning of the fourth day of Hanukkah. So we'll be lighting the fourth candle tonight. We will be speaking out the blessings. I crucified the Hebrew last week, so I'm just going to stay with the English tonight. And I hope that you guys will um, enjoy the sermon today. Now, I have to be honest, I've preached this before, but it's something we need to hear. And that is Hanukkah is a type of the new heavens and earth. The festival of lights is a type of living with the father of lights. Today is December 13th, five more days before the end of Hanukkah. And I hope that everybody here will understand it and enjoy it, to observe it with faithfulness and with rejoicing and joy. Father, your word is true all the time. It says in Romans, it compared to your word, all men are liars. And that's so very true. But we thank you that your holiness still uh, rises up within us and your righteousness shines out of us. As I preach this sermon, Father, I pray that you will be honored and glorified in everything I teach. Let nothing come out of my mouth that is not of you. Help us to enjoy understanding how important it is for us to know the culmination and ultimate fulfillment of this wonderful holiday. I ask you to be glorified in us and through us. In Yeshua's name, amen. To our friends in Uganda that are joining us uh, on YouTube, you will love what's going on in this sermon because it gives you hope. And you need all the hope you can get right now. Things aren't all that easy for, you, for our fellowships in Uganda. So embrace the truths. Allow them to permeate in your heart and life. Apply them to your hearts as you walk through your day. For our friends who are joining us in Indonesia, Pakistan, and India, you are looking for truth, and I'm doing my best to give you what you ask me for. I ask you to listen closely to the teachings of this sermon so that you and your people can be uh, encouraged that Messiah is coming soon. For our friends in Cuba that are listening to this, you, you need the encouragement so much. Uh, I hope you enjoy what you are learning from this sermon. For our friends, Patience Prince, Cindy Arnold, and um, Gina Ryoski, whose people are following us, you're going to enjoy this. So and buckle up. It's going to be a good ride. Um, firstly, though, I, I don't like starting a sermon unless it's uh, some light anecdote or joke. Today I'm going to talk about Catch Anything Yet. Sitting on the bank of a stream, a young fisherman strolled his bait lazily in the water, or trolled his uh, bait lazily in the water, and chewed comfortably on a blade of grass. Catch anything yet? asked the stranger. Nope, murmured the fisherman. That's strange. It appears to be such a fine stream for a trout, said the stranger. It must be, replied the fisherman. They refuse to leave it. <laughs> All right. I got a giggle. I, that's better than nothing, right? Today's scripture reading is James 1, 16 through 18. My dear brothers and sisters, do not be led astray. Every good present and every perfect gifts, gift comes from above, from the Father of the heavenly lights. The Father does not change like a shifting, as like shifting, I just washed my tongue and I can't do anything with it. Every perf uh, uh, change like the shifting shadows produced by the sun and the moon. Yahweh decided to give us life through the word of truth to make us his most important creations. Remember, we are the <coughs> pinnacle of all his creation. That includes the universe and everything in it. The only one greater than his human creation is his son, 
our Master and Savior, Yeshua, the one who is Adonai, and what some would say, God in the flesh. Hanukkah is a type of the new heavens and new earth, where Yahweh our Elohim, the Father of lights, will live with his people. There is so much you can say about each festival that Israel observes, including what we see in the glorious holiday of Hanukkah, or pronounced correctly, Kanukkah. Hanukkah is the eighth and final of the joyous Jewish festivals. On Thursday, December 10th, 2020, we began celebrating the eight-day festival of Hanukkah. It is not in scripture, but I see Hanukkah as a type and shadow of the new heavens and new earth. There are seven festivals of Yahweh containing the last day's chronological timeline. These festivals are complete as types and shadows of Messiah in them. They contain 7,000 years of human history. The seven festivals complete Yahweh's chrono chronology of the last days. Following them is Hanukkah, the festival of lights. It is the eighth and final festival of is Israel um, and represents a new beginning. The title Maccabee comes from the Hebrew word for hammer, makav. Judah Maccabee was given the title of the hammer of Yahweh. Judah Maccabee in his earlier occupation was a blacksmith. In reality, Hanukkah is an extension of the Sukkoth festival because it was put off for a while as the Maccabees were at war with Antiochus IV while they hammered their enemies, pun intended. The, to understand the, that why the festival of Hanukkah is seen as a type and shadow of the new heavens and new earth, we need to see how Hanukkah is an extension of Messiah's millennial reign. Messiah's millennial reign is the ultimate fulfillment of the festival of Sukkoth. Hanukkah is an extension of the festival of Sukkoth, and we can see that it represents the new heavens and earth. Mark 13, 24 through 27 reveals, But in those days, after the tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. The stars of heaven will fall, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken or dissolved. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send his angels and gather together his elect from the four winds, from the farthest part of the earth to the farthest part of heaven. When the tribulation ends, Messiah's millennial reign will experience a fundamental change in the physics of the universe. The stars seen as fallen angels of heaven will fall. They are not real stars. Set Revelation 19, 6-9 says, And I heard, as it were, the voice of a, multi a great multitude, as the sound of many waters, and as the sound of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for Yahweh Elohim omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Then he said to me, Right, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, There are these are true sayings of Yahweh. If real stars fell from the heavens, then earth would be vaporized by their heat. They are governing powers of the universe who comprise the evil and is invisible realms of the second heavens. And remember, all supernatural warfare is, go, is permeated in, into the second heavens. Isaiah 34, 4 declares this saying, All of the host of heaven will be dissolved, and the heavens will be rolled up like a scroll. All their host shall fall down as a leaf falls from the vine and as fruit falling from a fig tree. As a side note, the powers of the heavens will lose the covering of the invisible realms of the first and second heavens at Messiah's return. They will be cast to the earth and seen as they really are. At the end of the great tribulation, Messiah will return with his bride. 
who made herself ready and wore heaven's fine linen, along with myriads of angels, to celebrate his marriage, her marriage to the Lamb. The rest of rebellious humanity will be cast into hell's holding cells after they have faced defeat and death at the hands of the Messiah. Their spirits will wait in, in them until they stand before Messiah. And that would be what that would be the white throne judgment. Revelation 19, 29 through, or 20, 19 through 21 declares, And I saw the beast, the anti-Messiah, the, and the kings of the earth, and their armies. They gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Then the beast was captured, and with him the false prophet, who worked signs in his presence, by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast, and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire, burning with brimstone. And the rest were killed with the sword, which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse. And all the birds were filled with their flesh. When Messiah returns with his bride and his angels, he will destroy his tribulation enemies and chain Satan, his fallen angels, and their demonic offspring in hell's darkest level, which is Tartarus. Revelation 20, 1 through 3 tells us, Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the red dragon, that serpent of old, who is the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal on him, so that he should deceive the nations no more until the thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. Afterward, afterward we will reign with Messiah for 1,000 years during his millennial reign, governing over the nations until Satan is released to cause havoc and tempt humanity to reject her King Messiah. Revelation 24 reveals, And I saw thrones, and they sat on them, referring to the 24 elders, and judgment was committed to them. Then I saw the spirits of those who had been beheaded for their witness to Yeshua and for the word of Elohim, who had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their foreheads or on their hands. And they lived and reigned with Messiah for a thousand years. Again, Hanukkah is a type of the new heavens and new earth. It is a, the last festival to be fulfilled after Messiah's millennial reign is completed. It is the ultimate fulfillment of the festival of Sukkoth. After Satan is released, he will wreak havoc on humanity and tempt humanity, including believers, to turn from their faith in Messiah and join him in his crusade to overthrow Elohim's throne. At the final victory of the saints over Satan, whose real name is Halel, at the end of Messiah's millennial reign, those of us who endure to the end will be given immortal, incorruptible, and unchangeable bodies. Revelation 20, verse 7 through 10 says, Now, when the thousand years have expired, Satan will be released from his prison and will go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, the third and final war of the last days, to gather them together for to battle, whose number is as the sand of the sea. They went up to the on the broad plain of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city. And fire came down from Yahweh out of heaven and devoured them. The devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone where the beast, the anti-Messiah, and fall, the false prophet, who we know as a, the last pope, the apostate, are, and they will be uh, tormented day and night forever and ever. As we learn from, the pa from past sermons and research, there will be three Gog-Magog wars of the last days, the Psalm 83 Coalition War, the Armageddon War, and Revelation's Gog-Magog War. When the millennial reign of Messiah is over, Satan, the adversary, will build another coalition of nations, people, tribes, and tongues including deceived believers, to surround and attack Israel. 
However, at the end of the Armageddon War, the Second Gog Magog War, Messiah will return and restore his universe and dimension back to its pristine order so he can rule as the King of Kings. We will be as one when we appear because we will be revealed as Messiah's pure bride. It is our, in our new, our new bodies which we will receive then that we will flourish in the new heavens and new earth. Revelation 21, 1 through 4 declares, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth have, had passed away. There, also there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from Elohim, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of Yahweh is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they will be his people. Adonai himself will be with them and be their Elohim. And Yahweh will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There will be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Isaiah 65 tells us we won't even remember our previous lives when we enter into the new heavens and earth. We will never remember our sinfulness, pain, heartache, sickness, or fear again. Isaiah 65, 17 through 19 reveals, For behold, I create a new heavens and new earth, and the former will not be remembered or come to mind. But exalt and rejoice forever in what I create. Indeed, I create new Jerusalem for rejoicing and her people for joy. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy is in my people. The voice of weeping shall no longer be heard in her, nor the voice of crying. All believers will live eternally with our husband, Messiah Yeshua, and Abba Yahweh, the Father of lights, whose good and perfect gifts have been prepared to prov and provided for us, lasting forever. James 1, 16 through 18 says, Whatever is good and perfect is a gift coming down to us from above, from the Father of, the heavenly, of heavenly lights, the Father doesn't change or vacillate like the shifting shadows produced by the sun and the moon. Yahweh decided to give us life through the word of truth to make us his most important and prized creations. It will be in the new heavens and new earth that we will flourish and serve Messiah. We will live in the presence of Abba Yahweh, our Heavenly Father, also called the Father of the Heavenly Lights. There was a very funny sign outside of an assembly that said, Merry Christmas to our Christian friends. Happy Hanukkah to our Jewish friends. And to our atheist friends, good luck. <laughs> this is truth. This goes to the next point. The festival of lights, Hanukkah, is the eighth festival of Israel. Eight is the number of new beginnings and also the number for the new heavens and new earth. Yahweh's festivals contain a chronological order. Each one has a minor fulfillment and an ultimate fulfillment. All of them had prophetic significance to all Jews and believers throughout history. Each one has a numeric value from the Most High. Each one of them is commanded to be observed according to their chronological order. Four have been fulfilled prophetically by Messiah. Yahweh's four spring festivals were fulfilled to the letter and, the sp and spirit of Torah from Messiah's death burial and resurrection to the outpouring of Elohim's mighty Holy Spirit on Messiah's assembly. In the fulfillment of last day's prophetic events, Yahweh's final three festivals detail the evacuation of Messiah's rapture-ready bride along with her judgments and rewards and Messiah's glorious return. The festival of Hanukkah represents a new paradigm in prophetic events because it is a type of a new beginning found in Messiah's ultimate fulfillment of life in the new heavens and new earth. What makes it important to Christians and Messianic followers is that Hanukkah represents the new heavens and new earth in its observance, where the Father of Lights will dwell amongst his people. That is why I am detailing this final festival of the Fall Festivals, the Festival of Lights, also known as the Festival of Dedication, where Yahweh's people will live in his glorious presence eternally. 
Yahweh's festivals are very important for both Christians and Messianic believers to follow. They celebrate Yahweh's prophetic events for his covenant people from ages past through the present. And I'll add here, and into the future. The feasts mark out the prophetic events of the first advent of Messiah Yeshua in his priestly role as the suffering servant almost 2,000 years ago, as fulfilled from Psalm 22 and in Isaiah 52 and 53. Three of Yahweh's feasts, the spring feasts, have already had their ultimate fulfillment by Messiah Yeshua himself in his death, burial, and resurrection, and the fourth by Yahweh's Holy Spirit. The next two feasts, the Festival of Trumpets and the Day of Atonement, mark out the 70th, 70th week of Daniel, the final seven years before the millennial reign of Adonai, Messiah Yeshua. The Sukkot festival will, as Hanukkah eventually will, see its ultimate fulfillment on Messiah Yeshua's coronation day when he is crowned as eternal king at his glorious millennial reign. All biblical last days prophecy revolves around Israel and must be seen in the chronological order of Yahweh's festivals, which then makes prophecy understandable, vibrant, alive, and exciting. No one knows exactly when the last three feasts will be fulfilled, but it's reasonable to believe that they will be fulfilled in the exact same sequence on the actual feast days of the creation calendar. All prophecy is somewhat murky until it's fulfilled. Then its prophetic events take, make sense. Since all prophecy revolves around Israel, it must be viewed from Yahweh's prophetic festival timelines. Amen? The, fe the final point, the festival of lights, or the festival of dedication, is observed as an extension of the festival of Sukkoth, which is a type of Yahweh living amongst us. Hanukkah is a celebration of the rededication or renewal of the temple by the Maccabees after it was defiled two years earlier by Antiochus Epiphanes in honor of Zeus, the god he worshipped, the sun god he worshipped. The year of Jubilee is sounded at Yom Kippur to declare that freedom has come to Israel. Sukkoth follows five days later and is a type and shadow of Yahweh living amongst us when Messiah returns. According to the book of Maccabees, Hanukkah is an extension of Sukkoth. Israel was in disarray and on the run during the Sukkoth festival of 169 to 168 BCE under Antiochus uh, Epiphany's rule. Second Maccabees 10, 1 through 8 proclaims, Judas Maccabeus and his followers, under the leadership of Yahweh, recaptured the temple and the city of Jerusalem. They tore down the altars which foreigners had set up in the marketplace and destroyed the other places of worship that had been built. They purified the temple and built a new altar. Then, with new fire started a stri by striking flint, they offered sacrifices for the first time in two years, burned incense, lighted the lamps, and set out uh, the sacred loaves. After they had done all this, they lay down, they lay face down on the ground and prayed that Yahweh would never again let such disaster strike them. They begged him to be merciful when he punished them for future sins and not hand them over to any more to barbaric pagan non-Jews. They rededicated the temple on the 25th day of the month of Kislev, the same day of the same month on which the temple had been desecrated by the non-Jews. The happy celebration lasted eight days. The festival of Sukkoth, like the festival of Sukkoth, and the people remembered how only a short time before they had spent the festival of shelters wandering like wild animals in the mountains and living in caves. But now, carrying green branches and sticks de decorated with ivy, they paraded around singing grateful praises to Yahweh who had brought about the purification of his own temple. Everyone agreed that the entire Jewish nation should celebrate this festival each year. Hanukkah is a type of a second Sukkoth or Tabernacles festival where the temple is restored and or rededicated as a type of Messiah's reappearance. It was celebrated every year after a uh, year after for that victory. Sukkoth is all uh, Su I'm sorry, Sukkoth is also called the feast of dedication because this was when Solomon dedicated Yahweh's temple. It came to be known as the Festival of Lights from the Temple's Illumination during Sukkoth. 
It is said that the entire city of Jerusalem was filled with light from the four 70-foot-tall seven-branched menorahs. These menorahs were types and shadows of Yahweh's perfect sacrifice, Messiah. <clears throat> Sukkoth, or Tabernacles, is a festival that pictures nations worldwide coming to Messiah, the Holy One. He is not only the light of, to the nations, but is the light himself. He will minister to all people. <laughs> I hate to say this, but I'm going to anyway. To Yahweh, all lives matter. John 1, 4 and 5, and 1, 4 and 5 and 14 says, The Word gave life to everyone that was created, and His life brought light to everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness can never extinguish it. So the Word became human and made His home among us. He was full of unfailing love and faithfulness. And we have seen His glory, the glory as of the Father's one and only Son. Isaiah says Yeshua is the promised King over all the earth. According to this passage, Messiah not, will not be received by any nation at first, but will become their light at his return after the tribulation. Isaiah 49, 6 and 7, Yahweh promises, I will also give you my Yeshua to be for a light of the nations to the ends of the earth. So says Yahweh, the Redeemer of Israel, his Holy One, Messiah, is to be despised of soul, is to be hated of the nations, and will be the servant of rulers. Kings will see him and rise up, and chiefs will worship him because of Yahweh who is faithful and the Holy One of Israel, Messiah, and he chose you. All nations will observe Sukkoth, the festival of tabernacles, alongside of Messiah Yeshua. He is the light to the nations. It is from Hanukkah, the festival of lights, that we see a type of Messiah. John 10 and John 10, Messiah tells his disciples that he himself is the true shepherd over all of his flocks. He loves all of his sheep, unlike the anti-Messiah who will fleece his flocks and destroy their lives. John 10, 14 through 16 tells us, I am the good shepherd. I know my own sheep, and they know me, just as my father knows me, and I know the father. So I sacrifice my life for the sheep. I have other sheep, too, that are not of the sheepfold. I must bring them also. They will listen to my voice, and there will be no one flock with, I'm sorry, and there will be one flock with one shepherd. We must realize that Messiah's sheep comprise nearly two millennia from every era and generation. Yeshua referred to us when he said that he had sheep from other folds. In this he meant eras and times. Yeshua revealed himself as the good shepherd. He has flocks of sheep from all generations and eras globally. Messiah observed the festival of dedication, Hanukkah, while he was under Torah. John 10, 22 through 28 tells us, The festival of the dedication of the temple took place in Jerusalem during the winter. Yeshua was walking on Solomon's porch in the temple courtyard. The Jews surrounded him. They asked him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Yeshua answered them, I've told you, but you don't believe me. The things that I do in my Father's name testify on my behalf. However, you don't believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep respond to my voice, and I know who they are. They follow me, and I give them eternal life. They will never be lost, and no one will tear them from away from me. And that goes to the last point. The festival of lights, known as Hanukkah, is a type of new beginnings when believers are introduced to the new heavens and earth with Yahweh forever. Israel's eighth festival celebrates the festival of lights and the celebration of the Maccabean revol revolt which resulted in the uh, rededication of the temple in 165 BCE when it was restored to Israel. Hanukkah is an eight-day festival, celebrating the miracle of the lights that burned in Yahweh's temple 
and it had been cleansed from the desecration of the Holy of Holies faced under Antiochus Epiphanes IV, the fourth. At the end of a Shemitah cycle of seven years, all debts are for <coughs> excuse me, all debts are forgiven. Land is put at rest, and people are returned home. The eighth year is a new start of seven years to plant, grow crops, and build enterprises. The year of Jubilee is seen as a grant of remission and a universal pardon of all sin and debt. Our bankruptcy laws are based on the Shemitah cycle in both Judaism and in Western Christianity. In Leviticus, a Jubilee occurs every 50th year, at which point slaves and prisoners are set free from captivity, all debts are forgiven, and Yahweh's mercies and forgiveness are practiced freely. Even our bodies, after seven years, begin a new cycle in the eighth year. We are completely different people. Our emotions change, our attitudes mature, and we become more engaged with others. It is the same with the eighth festival of Israel, Hanukkah, the Festival of Lights. This festival had, had begun a new era of worship to Yahweh for Israel when his temple was rededicated to him. The number eight in, in Hebrew gematria is seen as a new beginning. Just as believers are given a new life and hope in Messiah, so they are given a new home in the new true heavens and new earth. We were created as new creatures in Messiah the very moment we put our trust in him alone for salvation, believed in his redemption work for us, and received him as our personal savior. 2 Corinthians 5.17 promises, So that if anyone is in Messiah, he is a new creature. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. We who have put our trust in Messiah alone for salvation have his promise of eternal life. We are going to be with him in heaven. When he returns, he will bring us back to a restored earth. John 14.1-3 promises us, Do not let your heart be troubled. Believe in Yahweh and believe in me. There are many rooms in my father's home, house, and if not, I would have told you, for I will go to prepare a place for you, and since I will go and prepare a place for you, I am coming again and will receive you to myself, that where I am, you may be also. Our Messiah is also our husband. He is the bridegroom. His assemblies are uh, of believers are his bride who he considers holy and without fault. He will return for her soon and take her to heaven. Ephesians 5, 25 through 27 declares, Husbands, love your wives, as the Messiah also loves his congregations and gave himself up for her sake, to sanctify and purify her in the washing of water and in the word. And he will establish the assembly for himself without blemish or wrinkle, neither any such things whatsoever, because but she will be holy and without defect. In conclusion, our home will be with Messiah in heaven and with Abba Yahweh, the Father of lights, for eternity. Messiah is the light and principle of life for all believers. He will light our lives forever in Elohim. Heaven will shine with the brightness of Yahweh's glorious presence. He will be seen for who he is by those of us who are there to witness his glory, Messiah, the glory of the Father in heaven. Hanukkah, the festival of lights, is the eighth festival Israel has observed and celebrated since 165 BCE. It was and is based on the Maccabean revolt that cleansed the temple and saw miracles. Hanukkah is an eight-day festival which is, a type, type, which is typified by a nine-candle Hanukkah. It is, high, it is lighted each day of the festival, celebrating Yahweh's goodness, faithfulness, and provision during its eight-day uh, period. The Festival of Lights is seen as a new beginning with new hopes and dreams. It is in the new heavens and new earth where all believers of all eras will serve and live with the Father of Lights. Our hope in Messiah is directly related to the Festival of Lights because it typifies our new home in heaven where we will live with triune Elohim. He is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen? In benediction, Revelation 22, 3 through 5, No longer will there be a curse upon anything, for the throne of Yahweh and of the Lamb will be there, 
and his servants will worship him. And they will see his face, and his name will be written on their foreheads. And there will be no night there, no need for lamps or sun, for Yahweh Elohim will shine on them, and they will reign forever and ever. Yahweh has blessed you and will protect you. Yahweh has smiled on you and has been gracious to you. Yahweh has shown you his favor and will give you his perfect and complete peace. Amen, amen, and amen.